We're looking at Jesus feeds the multitude this evening, and they'll be back in a moment. And I hope you've enjoyed this series where we've been looking at Jesus at the dinner table. So we'll have to think about Jesus in the in the crowds, and we think about Jesus, uh, you know, working miracles. We think about many kinds of things, but Jesus around the table is interesting. Now, in this. This reading this evening, Jesus is in with the multitude, but also this miracle is kind of up close and personal in lots of wonderful ways. So I invite you to join me in John chapter 6, verses 1 through 14, where Jesus feeds the multitude. After this, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then and seeing that a large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered, Two hundred denarii worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to have just a little bit. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they for so many? And Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, about 5,000 number. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, gather up the leftovers, fragments, that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled large, 12 large baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, This is indeed a prophet who has come into the world. Well, may the Lord bless his word this evening to us as we feed spiritually, if you will. So we've been around the dinner table with Jesus, and uh, we've been with uh, Matthew, the tax collector, at his home. And we've also been with the wedding feast at Cana, and uh, last week we were with Zacchaeus for the short story and uh, enjoyed that. So as we look at this this evening, uh, I, I see this, and the first thing I see is uh, a large crowd. And as the drama kind of said, well, you know, a crowd can turn into a mob pretty quickly, especially if they get hungry, right? So you don't want a hungry mob. Could Things could turn ugly, so uh, fortunately you're all fed. And I'm hoping things won't get out of hand this evening, right? So, uh, but um, the first thing I see here is uh, it's interesting that Jesus sees the need. And I think that's very comforting because for a lot of us, when we see the crowd and we see all these kinds of things and the possibility of commotion, but Jesus sees the need up close and personal. So for each of us this evening, sometimes we look around and we don't think people know what we need, whether it's spiritual food or physical food, or whatever it is, but to yourself, think for a moment, what is it that you need from Jesus this evening, right now in your heart and in your life? And know with confidence that Jesus sees your need, and Jesus can meet it, but Jesus doesn't always meet it the way we'd like to. And, and I love this because you notice that, that Jesus asked Philip what they should do. Now it says that Jesus knew what he was going to do, but what does it say? Jesus did this to test Philip. Now, what does test mean here? Actually, it means to stretch, to stretch his faith so his faith could grow. And I think a lot of us, sometimes Jesus puts challenges in front of us so that we'll grow. Just like when we're working out or whatever, if you never lift any weights, your muscles won't grow. You need to, to exert and, and uh, take on a challenge that's bigger than uh, what you are, where you are right now in order to grow in faith. And so Jesus does this with Philip. And, and Philip says, you know, there's just no way. There's, there's just not enough money to even give everybody a small portion. But I think maybe as we went step by step along the way, that Philip was part of this, part of meeting the need, and his faith was growing. So where right now are you that maybe God is putting a challenge in front of you so that you'll grow, so that you won't stay the same? Right? We want to grow in our faith, in our life. And so where is Jesus stretching you? And then Andrew jumps in. Now, I like this. Andrew, you hardly ever hear about Andrew, right? But Andrew is Simon Peter's brother. And in this moment, Andrew has the courage to say, we've got a little boy here with five loaves and two fish, right? Are we going to mug this kid? <laughs> but some mom, okay, behind the scene was really the seed, first of all, for this to happen. Some mob 
mom packed up five loaves and, and two fish for this young boy. So to have it. And then the next thing is that the boy didn't hide it, right? Because a lot of us, if we see a mom, what are we going to do if we have five loaves and two fishes? We're going to kind of tuck it away, you know, <laughs> keep it safe, go behind a rock or tree, eat our fill. But this boy was willing to present that. And so I think that's the next thing. And he is willing to bless it and multiply it to meet the needs. And I think so many times we feel overwhelmed and under-resourced with all the needs that are around us. And so today, what is it, what gift or talent that you have that you might ask Jesus to bless that Jesus could do amazing things with God's blessing, right? And so this little boy had to be amazed that he offered just five loaves and two fishes and 5,000 people were blessed, at least 5,000 people. And so... We, too, have our gifts and talents, and when we all pull our gifts and talents, part of it, what it means to be a family of faith is to join together in our gifts and talents and then have Jesus bless and multiply them. So Jesus blesses, he prays for the loaves and fishes, and he begins to distribute them. Now, some places have the Jesus involved disciples. I think Jesus did involve all the disciples, but here's what I think is, is great about this. Is first is that it happens step by step. It didn't multiply so much that, you know, it was just tons of stuff. It was as they handed things out that it began to bless and multiply. So that's one thing. And the other thing that it's, God is a God of multiplication, not addition. <clears throat> addition is great. Multiplication is better, right, when it comes to things like this. So when Jesus blesses it, whatever we have, God can multiply it. So it doesn't matter how meager you think the gift or talent that God has given to you. If you will, like this little boy, present it, right? Then God can do amazing things. So it's so nice to have our youth involved. And this evening we're doing the drama and they're doing lots of other things. And we've been blessed by the confirmation class. But it doesn't matter how young we are, how old we are, how under-resourced we feel, or how overwhelmed we feel, that if we present what we have, to Lord that Jesus with his uh, God's blessing can do amazing things. So the next thing is that you notice that Jesus notices that once everyone is full, once everyone is full that there is loaves and fishes left over. And Jesus says to disciples, let nothing be wasted. So pack this all up, and there is lots of baskets left over, and take it to those who are in need. And I think that's an important message for all of us, that Jesus was concerned, one, that we're good stewards, that we don't waste things, and other thing is to share what we have. And I can imagine that, that those baskets of loaves and fishes went to the nearby town, or the people took it back. Maybe they took it to the nursing home, maybe they took it to the hospital, maybe they took it to people in need, and they shared with those folks who had a need in, it, in their own lives. If we trust God and we ask for God's blessing, there's always some things that we can share. Maybe it's food, maybe it's a car, maybe it's a phone call, maybe it's a visit. But all of us have something that we can do that we can share. And I think it's beautiful that in this moment and amidst all the crowd, Jesus is not only thinking about the people that are there. Jesus is thinking about the people who were not there. Jesus was not only thinking about the people who were there, but the people who were not there, who needed the resources, the blessing of this food, the loaves and the fishes, because sometimes a meal can mean so much. And just as much as the meal, sometimes it means a lot just to have someone who cares about you and know that someone is caring about you, right? They had this great party over here, but we were left out. No, you weren't left out. We brought something to you to share with you, and so I think that's a powerful blessing. And then, finally, Jesus is the bread of life. Now, if you keep reading on down, in, uh, in chapter 8 there, you come to this, or chapter 6 rather, it says this, after Jesus had worked some miracles, done some teaching, Jesus tells the disciples this in John 6.35, he says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. And I think what Jesus is trying to do is to show this has a spiritual side to it. This magnifies in a spiritual setting in a way that's so important in our hearts and lives. And so Jesus, of course, we think about, of course, the bread of communion. But we also think about the body of Christ, how Jesus was giving his uh, life on Calvary, not too far hence from there. But that not only our physical needs, but also our spiritual needs, that God is there to, to bless us. And he's emphasizing this point for us. 
And this word, I am, people think back to when uh, God revealed himself to Moses in the burning bush. Remember, I am that I am is what Yahweh or Jehovah means. And so in the sense, Jesus is revealing that he is the, the, with the creator, co-equal with the creator, and that he is the bread of life in manifesting one of the multiple aspects of his personality, his manifestation as God. So this evening, wherever you are on your spiritual journey or wherever you are on your Lenten journey, as we all journey towards the cross, we remember that Jesus sees our needs. Jesus sees our physical needs. Jesus sees our emotional and relational needs. Jesus sees our spiritual needs. And Jesus cares about that. His heart is moved, even as he was moved with the needs of the crowd. And then Jesus wants to involve us by using our gifts and talents. We all feel under-resourced and overwhelmed by the needs all around us in our community and around the world. But if we're willing, like this boy, to offer what we have, whatever it is, loaves and fishes, gifts and talents, with God's blessing, God begins to stretch our faith and involve us as we meet the needs of those around us. And as we do that, we grow in our spiritual lives and in our emotional relational lives as well. And then there's always abundant blessing. There was more than enough than for everyone who was there, this huge crowd of people that, you know, Andrew thought was impossible to meet, and Philip thought was impossible, Peter probably thought was impossible, all of them thought was impossible, but because Jesus blessed this little boy's gifts, the need was met, and it was met abundantly to overflowing, and then not to, not to waste anything, but to be good stewards, to share our resources, whatever the, they are, with those in need. Those not just that are there, but those who are not there, so that they are remembered, that they are cared for. And then finally, that, that Jesus is the bread of life. That Jesus comes to us with a, with a blessing for us spiritually, not just around the communion table, but that's an important place, but as we fellowship together here in our journey in life. And whatever the needs are, Jesus is there. Jesus gave his life on the cross that we would have our spiritual needs met, that he would pay the price for our sins and shortcomings, and that Jesus would also meet every spiritual need that we have. I want to close with um, this story that I love of Hattie Mae Wyatt. And you, you may know this story. It's such a great story. And Hattie Mae Wyatt, wow, this is back in the uh, 1800s, 1884, was just a young girl. And she was in this neighborhood in Philadelphia. And she went to this church. And the Reverend Russell Cromwell was the pastor there. And the church was, was growing, it was overflowing, and she tried to go to the Sunday school class, and the Sunday school class was full, and so she turned back, and the pastor saw her, and asked her what was going on, and she said, well, the Sunday school class is full, and didn't have enough room for her, and so, well, the pastor took her by the hand and took her back to the Sunday school, she's part of the neighborhood there, and they made sure she felt at home, and, and she and her family began to find a place there at that church, and two years later, Hattie Mae sadly passed away. This is a little girl, and the pastor was asked to do the memorial service for this little girl. And after the memorial service, the parents came up to the pastor and said they had found this little uh, bag of coins near Hattie Mae's pillow, and it had 57 cents in it, and that it said to build bigger, being the Sunday school, to build the Sunday school bigger. And so the pastor uh, was so touched by that, he took all those coins, and he made them into pennies, and he auctioned them off and to do a church building program for the Sunday school in the church, raised $250 from that 57 cents, and then went on to multiply that by changing back into pennies. And at the end of his ministry, it was about a, uh, seven or eight years later, the pastor gave this message and said that that money that she had given had grown and multiplied so much they were able to build a new sanctuary that, that seated 5,700 people, uh, that they were able to fund missions overseas, that they had also had a neighborhood program and they built uh, the hospital, which is a temple hospital, and then were able to start a university, which is Temple University in Philadelphia today. And so that story is a, is a legacy that, you know, when we think that we are overwhelmed and under-resourced, if we just have a little bit of faith and give what we have, even in dire circumstances, that God's blessing can do amazing things, can multiply it, and can meet needs of people then and even down the road. So I invite us to join together, and, oh, I need some help. Can you help us drop your hand? Rob and Rob, yeah, that's good, I like that. Rob and Rob, if you could hand those out to people. Um, I have these, 
questions for reflection, food for thought as we're going through this journey. And the first is, where are you spiritually, emotionally hungry this evening? Where are you worried about resources of any kind? Where do you need to experience Jesus as the bread of life? What gifts and talents would you like to offer Jesus to help a needy world? And where would you like Jesus to bring blessing and multiplication? Where would you like to help serve the needs of others? And where do you need to help collect leftovers to help others somewhere else? With that, I invite you into the litany of prayer that's on the back of your bulletin. You can take this home and do some reflection with your devotions, either in the evening or the morning, or even at <coughs> midday. Let's join together in prayer. Lord, we thank you that you've come in Christ to share life with us. Help us to open our hearts and lives to your grace and mercy. Thank you that you have shared times of weakness and heartache with us. Lord, we thank you for your presence in the times of hurt and pain. Lord, we thank you that you shared times of joy and celebration with us. Lord, help us to invite you into our times of joy and celebration. Lord, we thank you that you have shared times of fasting and feasting with us. Lord, we invite you into our homes, our table, and into our lives. Lord, help us to see the need around us and be willing to share. Lord, let the young boy and all of us to share with the fellows who have blessed us. Lord, bless and multiply that which we give. Lord, bless and multiply that which we give with the life of the disciples, and I are the blessing to others. Lord, help us to be good stewards of all that you have given us. Lord, help us to share from our abundance to help others in need. Lord, bless us that we might be a blessing to others. Grant us your forgiveness and grace. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And put a new and right spirit within me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And sustain in me a willing spirit. Amen. Amen.